Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 15 Methods of Attaining Ultimate Truth Chakra I salute thee who art born in the lotus. Homage to thee, thou lotus-wreathed goddess. I salute thee, wife of Govinda, who dwellest in a lotus. I salute thee, whose hair resembleth the delicate lotus filaments, O omniscient goddess, who art the witness principle residing in the mind of every living creature. I have followed all the teaching that has issued from thy lotus lips, that everything thou hast created is sustained by thee and will ultimately be merged in thee. The knower, the instrument of knowledge, knowledge, cognition, and the object of knowledge, all these are essentially none other than thyself. Every soul can only traverse the ocean of creation by worshipping thee alone. All this, O Goddess, I have fully understood. Now I am curious to know how, O Lotus-born, one may please thee who art on thy Lotus throne. By what means can one attain the highest goal, which is thy satisfaction, grace, love, priti. What is the method of pleasing thee? What is its nature? What does it entail? I salute thee, O lotus-born, deign to reveal all this to me. Shri The absolute Brahman is identified with the Chatur Vyuha, fourfold deity characterized by pure existence, consciousness, and bliss, who consists of all, transcends all, is imminent in all, and flawless, who is Vasudeva, the absolute Brahman, Mahat, the great principle consisting of Narayana. I am his absolute Shakti, his I-hood consisting of bliss and consciousness, I am identified with, and at the same time different from, him, like the moonlight of the moon. This unique existence and reality of ours, though single, appears to be dual. There is no way for the wise to progress towards emancipation other than by seeking higher knowledge, that is, the higher knowledge whereby the seer attains Brahman, that is, Narayana, that is, myself. That higher knowledge, derived from discriminating knowledge, distinguishing between truth and falsehood, which is totally pure and devoid of suffering, envisages Vasudeva as its sole aim and leads to the cessation of rebirth. Once this knowledge and realization is obtained, the adept instantaneously enters me and identifies himself with me. Pleased by these particular methods followed by the pure-souled living beings, I reveal that knowledge which throws light on the Supreme Self. There are four methods that gain my favor. Chakra. O lady living in the lotus, lovely spouse of the lotus-eyed one, O lotus goddess, please show me what these four methods are. Shri. Listen, Chakra, to the description of these four methods of acquiring my grace, which will always cause me, the absolute, great pleasure. Performance of one's duties as befitting one's varna. Knowledge of Sankhya, cosmic principles. Yoga, meditative devotion. And complete renunciation. These are the methods designated by the learned. The three types of Vedic rites, 
as defined by the four objects of sacrifice given below, comprise obligatory and occasional rites connected with one's varnashrama, occupational duty and stage of life. The first method is to perform a deed not made worthless by attachment to its fruits, wherein the wise should practice four types of complete renunciation. They should dedicate every act either to the deity mentioned in the mantra, to prakriti, to the senses, or to the supreme god Vasudeva, Janardana. First, the adept should surrender the idea of himself as being the performer to glorious Janardana. Then, he should surrender the result thereof. And finally, even the very acts themselves, performing only the compulsory and occasional duties enjoined by sacred scripture. Desirous only of worshipping me, the adept ceaselessly ingratiates me, Thus is briefly shown to you the method as described by Shruti and Smriti. Now hear the second method, the knowledge of Sankhya, cosmic principles. According to the Sankhya system, knowledge is of three types. Knowledge with reference to the things of this world, Charchana, speculative knowledge, and complete intuitive knowledge and realization of truth. These three types of knowledge are collectively named Sankhya. The elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and akash, space, ahankar, the ego principle, mahat, and prakriti, these are the eight principles I am going to explain to you. Prakriti is said to be of three types, Maya, Prasuti, and Trigunatmika. Maya is the name of that supreme subtle principle relating to insentient objects, which is in itself free and at the same time not free from attachment. It is unique, devoid of vibration or movement, and imperishable. Maya's slightly less subtle state is called prasuti. The development of all three gunas in equal proportion is the state of supreme prakriti. Avyakta, akshara, yoni, avidya, triguna, stiti, maya, svabhava, etc. are synonyms for prakriti. The three gunas are sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Sattva is light in weight, blissful and tranquil. Its functional mode is known as Prakasha, illumination, which reflects and raises consciousness. Being pure and transparent, it reflects knowledge, which is the illumination of truth. Rajas should also be known as being lightweight, sorrowful, and unstable. Its functional mode is activity, which is the cause of all vibration. It is imperishable. Thomas is heavy, immobile, and consists of illusion. Its functional mode is niyama, to fetter, and is sometimes characterized as inducing sleep. O Vasava, neither on earth, in heaven, nor in the space between, does any object exist devoid of these three gunas, which are the products of prakriti. These gunas, governing the mind, manifesting themselves through the senses, and at the same time inherent in every single object, produce pleasure, pain, and illusion. It is these gunas, evolved into the body and the senses that are responsible for all activity. He who constantly bears this in mind frees himself from these gunas. <laughs>